Hi, it's Judith from JV Art Resources, and thanks for joining me today. I wanted to discuss something with you uh, regarding photorealistic drawings. I am going to be setting up a tutorial. Um, it's probably going to be of my dog Robin that I've drawn many times before, and I want to uh, do a beginner tutorial to take you along step by step on how I create that. Now, um, I am a self-taught artist, and I've done various tutorials to learn some technique, but um, I don't really follow instructions too well. I tend to stray off and do my own thing. And um, that really is ha has become a style, uh, if you will, on the way I do my photorealistic drawings. Um, I really just zoom in really close on each inch of the drawing that I need to do and I'll work it that way. I mean, you're really drawing what you see. When you're drawing a photorealistic drawing, you're drawing exactly what you see from your photo reference. I don't know too many people who do photorealism from their head. Maybe there is, but um, usually you are looking at a photograph and you're recreating that or a portion of that. And um, that's what I'm going to be showing you here. Uh, a lot of people look at that and think it's um, extremely difficult. And um, there is a lot of technique in doing that. But it's not necessarily difficult. But there are things that you need to know uh, before you get started on that. You know, so you could get that realistic look. And um, like I said, since I'm a self-taught artist, I have my own style and my own way of doing it. And as um, I'll show you here, some things I've done. Some of you have seen this before. Um, I'll just zoom in here a little bit. Um, this is uh, all done from photographs. This is the photorealistic bird in hand drawing. This was taken uh, by a friend. And um, then that is the uh, drawing that I did. Oh, excuse me, going the wrong way. And then over here is a selfie I took. Um, about, I did this about two years ago of my dog Robin. And um, I just cropped this section here. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I cropped this. I need to take a video filming lessons now. Um, and then when I did, uh, I was able to focus just on her. And that is the drawing that uh, came out of it. So uh, this is framed in my living room right now. Uh, the drawing down here is my daughter's dog. Uh, this was the photograph of him on the deck. And this is uh, the drawing that I did. It's quite large now and framed into a 16 by 20. Um, hopefully she'll be hanging that someday. But um, it's a great drawing and now um, he's no longer with us. So I'm so happy uh, to have recreated it. And that's another reason why, you know, this photograph might get lost somewhere. It might get forgotten about. It might get um, either put in a box if it's a hard copy or just lost on a hard drive somewhere. But now having a photorealistic drawing of the way he looked um, in that position, that moment in time, it's just a great thing. Thing to have. And um, I'll just show you one more. This here is my um, sweet dog Robin yet again. And uh, I'll show you what with that how that was created. Um, this here, okay, there we go. That is the drawing, right uh, the picture rather, uh, right there that she was in my car. And I thought again, what a cute expression. So that's the picture that I created from that. And uh, just by blowing up certain sections and um, just copying what you see, really. Uh, and th actually, that, um, that's about it with the animals. Uh, there's a picture of my beautiful mother over there that's done in graphite, but um, that's a subject for another day. So, um, as you can see, there you can really get very photorealistic. And then once you have that picture in a drawing form, it becomes a beautiful work of art. So I'm going to go over a couple of things with you and just uh, tell you a couple of really important things that I, I believe you need to do, to uh, the steps you need to do to get this in order. And now, uh, first and foremost, you need to have a really great photo. Um, if it's a little dark or a little light, that's not really a problem, but you need to be able to see the highlights in the eyes, the color shifts in the fur. You need to be able to see those things. You need to be able to see the values. Um, I have a picture of my dog that I may be drawing someday, and she looks kind of orangey in there, and I know she's more golden, but I could see the highlights. Actually, I have that picture here. I'm going to show that to you right here. 
she's very orange here and that's not her true color at all but if you look close you could see her eyes are really clear and the nose is really clear and when you put this on the computer and you blow it up on the screen which I'm going to show you here now also um, this is how you can tell that this is a, a, a really great drawing oh that's not even the one but it's similar so I'll show you um, when you blow it up, like look at that eye. You could see everything in that eye. You could see, actually I think you could see the person taking the picture. The light, the window in her eye. So um, that's all the little details that you want to be able to look for in a good photograph. Um, here her ears a little bit chopped off, but we can just sketch that back in. That's not a problem. And her nose here also, you could see the wetness in her nose. And uh, when you blow that up big, really you could spot every detail and then you want to what I like to do is quarter the picture and then I just work on that one section right here and then just move across and down until the nose is complete and then you could go back in and add little touches you might need to go back in and add those little wet spots later on when the drawing is done but you can still get down all your darks and your lights and the color shifts and then you want to move up up to the nose and the fur. And if you notice here, there's lots of grays and golds and there's a little bit of white in there as well. And then you just as you keep moving up, you could just see all the different color changes and all where the wetness is in her eye. And there's this is just a really great picture. So something like that would work really well. And then if you have this drawing and get this on your computer, even if you take a picture of it, uh, it's better to find the original picture so it doesn't lose clarity. But um, if you can get this on the computer, you can blow this up just like I did on that other sample and then work side by side. Here's another example of that. The picture that I just showed you, this is the photograph. This is the drawing. And that's basically how I worked it. When I was working on this drawing, I had a copy of the photo right next to me. and. Also, it was on my computer. So that's how I was able to actually recreate it, by looking at every inch and knowing exactly where every line and what every color is going to be placed where. So it just takes a little bit of patience, really, and um, you'll be able to do that as well. So, um, so once you find yourself a good photo, the next thing that you need to do is figure out how you're going to transfer that onto your paper. Um, you may take a couple of tries to do that. I have something else here I'm trying to show you. Okay, I don't see it at the moment. But um, something that I do uh, is you need to get your proportions 100%. Like, don't worry about the fur or the ears or the colors or anything else until you get those eyes on the paper. Because if you don't have the eyes correct, um, you're going to get all this all this time is going to be invested into your drawing and it's going to be off. It's not going to look right. So it's very important in a portrait that the eyes, the nose, the mouth are all in proportion. So you can, once you get your, your reference, uh, well this is not the reference here, once you get this you can then put this on your drawing paper with some transfer paper underneath and lightly sketch till it goes on your paper. Or something else that I do is you could just take a graphite pencil and just a rub in the center here where the eyes are. Just rub right there very gently and then when you place this on your paper you could go around the eyes and then that will go onto your paper so you don't have to necessarily transfer the whole thing. Um, most of the time I transfer just the eyes and then freehand the rest because once you have an eye on the paper and it's right then that's the point you can go from. You just go from that point forward. Now keep in mind if you were drawing it and using the, the blow up on your computer that the proportions are going to be very different. The distance from one eye to the next is going to show three inches on the computer but it's really not because you're blowing it up. So just keep that in mind. It's very easy to um, get your proportions screwed up that way. But if, if you um, graphite the back of this area right here and then lay this on your paper that's a perfect start. You'll have a great foundation, you'll have the eyes and the nose and the muzzle all in the perfect place and then you'll take your time and fill in the rest and you'll have no problem, I guarantee it. But you have to start with good proportions. That's always first and foremost. To get your 
proportions down and your line drawing on your paper and you're ready to go, you can start by just blocking in the colors that you know you're going to need. Now, this first layer of color does not have to be exact, in my opinion. Um, if I'm doing my dog, who's a black and gold, you can do uh, black or even a dark brown and um, a tan even if you if you wanted to it it almost doesn't matter with that first layer that first layer is just filling up some tooth of the paper and color blocking where your colors are going to go you're going to add another layer on top of that of the true color and then you're going to add the hairs and the details so just those extra layers of other colors are just going to add dimension to it and um, so you, as long as you're close with your colors it doesn't have to be exact on that very first layer now um, you could also fill in with pan pastel pastel pencils watercolor paint even just a very very light wash of color blocking um, and then of course you'd need to wait till it's thoroughly dry and then you could go back in with your pencil um, also watercolor pencils that's a great technique I learned from watching a tutorial from Lisa Watkins um, it's uh, color blocking has been around for a while but there's so many wonderful ways that we can make color blocking work with colored pencil and um, that's one of my favorites really is uh, using colored pencil putting that down and then once the drawing is all set then you go over it with your water brush and it really comes to life once it's totally dry then you could use those same watercolor pencils um, I choose to use um, Pablo's for details uh, and polychromos as well I use three different brands of pencils sometimes four when I'm working on a drawing whatever color I need uh, whatever pencil works for me at the time as long as it's a high quality pencil um, you really can't go wrong and uh, then I just go from there. So um, that's very important to get your base down. Um, and if you're not going to do it with an external medium like pan pastel or watercolor, do it with the pencils um, that you're going to use. Just pick up a color that's close, fill in all the golds and the browns, the beiges, the tans, and then that'll be all color blocked and ready for you to now work on with your details. Now, um, the next is I wanted to tell you when you are starting to work you want to see it exactly as it is when you are looking at it and you're going back and forth from photo reference to drawing there are things you might miss and now I'm going to point out a big mistake that I did that um, in the end nobody's gonna know um, but you are now because I'm going to show you let's go over to the owl bird in hand drawing and this is so you can see what I'm talking about and not repeat my mistake. Okay, so this is, let's see, this is the original photograph of Owl in Hand. And this is my drawing. Now, I have a protective sheet over it, so it's a little bit blurry. But that's because this is sold. Somebody purchased that, and they're going to give it as a gift. But um, I actually might have to take this sheet off to show you what I'm trying to show you. Okay, I'm sorry, bear with me just one moment, please. Okay, what I want to show you on this drawing, look at the eyes. Look at both eyes. The left eye over there and the left eye over here. Now, at first glance, when you look at this, it looks uh, very realistic. It looks just like the, the picture. But look at that eye carefully. You can see it's a little wonky in comparison. Um, it's a little bit squared off at the corner there. And so uh, let me use my pointer here instead. Um, right in here, it's a little bit squared off. And then right down here, there's not as much gold. It should be a little rounder here and a little rounder there. Now, nobody's going to know that. In fact, the drawing sold. And uh, the person who purchased it saw the original and loved it and never noticed it. So a little thing like that you could get away with. And that's because the rest of it is very exact really the most of the drawing is uh, pretty spot on so something like that nobody's gonna notice but this is where you need to be able to compare as you're working now I'm gonna show you on the computer down here the way that I do that okay so if you look here here's the bird on the computer 
and it's blown up pretty big over here. Now this is a picture of it on the computer, so actually it's going to be much better when you're doing it without doing it through a picture. But when, you know, working on the beak or working on the eyes, you could see everything you need when it's blown up like this. But if you don't look at it and you don't go back and forth and look at it, you could definitely make a mistake with the shape. And that's where it's going to throw you. So when I do the drawing, I have it on my computer blown up. I also have the picture and then I have my drawing. So as I'm working on my drawing, I'm referring to the picture and then I'm also referring to the blow up. If I'm going to work on the beak, I move it around. If I'm going to work on the eyes, I move it around. And then I have it right here in the picture to get an overall look. And then I continue on. And that's how I do it. And we do it one inch at a time. When you do a split screen like that, you can see exactly as it is. And um, that's uh, really important. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. Make time to create every day. And I'll see you next time.